Hi, welcome. Today I would like to uh, talk about how you can test your React apps which are created with Create React Apps. So let's get started. So the basically out of the box when you uh, run npm run test, it would create an environment using a module for JS DOM. So you can uh, use that. And so let's just run this thing again to for a test and you can run it by saying npm run test and as you can see it runs through a file called apptest.js here is the file uh, let me see here is the file and we can take a quick look so this is the my test file the main app was in app.js and uh, the test runner which is the jest will basically run test from there so right now we only have one basic test this says uh, you create a DOM element div and render your app in that. And it says it is crashing right now. And an error occurred in all these components. So um, there is no magic to figuring out what it does. So if you look at it, uh, when you run npm run test, it runs React script test and sets the environment to JS DOM. That's what we did. To debug the app, where it can basically you can go down and see uh, through various things that it's failing, but it says it's having a problem in table component in mount at this point So let's just command and click and here it is uh, and I already know what the problem is It's not able to find the data table for example the way we have set this up It works fine in the app environment, but uh, when it does in the JS Just environment it is having some problems. So let's just fix that and I already know how to fix it. And I'm just going to set it to DT. And if I do this, you can see that the test suite passed and everything was good. So that's kind of the basics of the JEST testing if you just want to do that. So if you want to go and uh, you can learn more uh, if you go to the Facebook website and I put in a link there, testing React apps, okay. So if you want to go a little bit um, beyond that, what we can do is uh, we can uh, use what is called the uh, shadow testing and that's a good method to do unit testing. And it is done through something called Enzyme. And I have some recipe that I've already structured. You want to install uh, Enzyme, Enzyme Adapter React 16, which is the version of React I'm using, and the React Test Renderer. So once you have done all of that, which I've already done, you want to make sure you add uh, uh, something called configure and adapter and run this code in source setup test.js. So I'm going to copy this and make sure it's in there. Let me see if it's in there. So I'm going to copy this code into source setup test.js. And as you can see, it works uh, fine, but we haven't really created a shallow test for unit testing. So to do that, I have a few lines of code which I'm going to copy into my app.js and I'm going to show you what it does. First of all, we want to just import what is called shallow. And you can see uh, it also still passes. And the main thing to look at is that when you go into the app, uh, basically when you do are doing shallow testing, it is going to dummy up this table component. So it's not going to really go into uh, this component. That's what shallow testing is. And to quickly demonstrate what I'm going to do is use the Visual Studio Code debugger to illustrate that point. So I have a debug point here. And in my test file, I'll put a debug point here. I'll put a debug point here. And let's just uh, start the debugger right now. So if you would notice that the first time uh, when it runs, uh, it is obviously uh, continuing on. So let's just um, see if it uh, keeps working. Sometimes I do have a problem with the debugger here with Visual Studio Code. But if it works, then it is reasonable, reliable. So it can see it stopped in my first test. So let's just continue progressing. Here you can see it uh, uh, passed in my uh, table component which is what I expect because we are using JS DOM for that and if I continue it's going to do the shallow app and at this point it should not go into my table component because it's obviously dummied out by enzyme so if I continue on you could see it did not uh, really stop there 
So that's actually a good demonstration of how to use uh, for unit testing because typically for unit testing what you want to do is all of the sub modules you really want to mock and you don't want to be really dependent on them. So that's uh, really what engines and the shallow rendering gives to you. And that's the illustration. If you want to learn more, you can go to this uh, GitHub for Airbnb enzyme and learn more about that. So another last quick point I want to talk about is how to do the snapshot testing and how it can be useful to you. So let's uh, set up our snapshot testing. Here we want to do is uh, import these things. So let's just import this in the test. I am going to copy this here. So right now we need to import the renderer and I usually like to import these things at the top. That way I can be sure they are available everywhere they are needed. So if you look at the third test, basically what it says is uh, the renderer reads correctly uh, and then you can change it, uh, expect it to match snapshot. And if I run the test again here, Yeah, for some reason it's trying to still run the debugger. So let me just exit out of this and start it again. I am uh, going to uh, just uh, demonstrate the snapshot testing. So here we go into our terminal and I am going to see if I can run npm run test again. And it should basically what it is doing is the renderer creates something called a snapshot and it says the snapshot should match the test. If you run it for the first time, it always passes because it says test three passes. And if you're just curious what it does, it you can go into your it creates a direct render snapshots and it actually creates a snapshot of what it matches. So this is uh, the snapshot of your DOM and it actually looks like your DOM really and it matches properly. So let's say if you wanted to, uh, once you have created and you're happy with your UI and everything else, uh, you're good to go. And let's say if you just wanted to test this thing and see how this snapshot can help you, let me just go and change my HTML or GSX here. And now if the test is running, you can see it is failing because it's failing because it's the stored snapshot or what I was storing in the UI is not matching with what it expects. And you can see it is failing because I added this extra thing and that's what uh, it, uh, is failing. And what you can do is um, you can do the watch usage and usually if you run it in engine mode, you can update the snapshot. And if you update the snapshot, you could uh, essentially uh, be uh, good with that. And that's pretty much how the snapshot testing uh, works. So every time it runs, it will create a snapshot and will match against the previous one. If it doesn't match, it will tell you what it is. And you can either go and fix your uh, UI or you can update it to the new snapshot. And that's how uh, it works. So here it says press U to update the failing snapshot, which I'm going to do. And once I update the failing snapshot, it matches. If I look in my snapshot file, you can see we have the two logos uh, twice and it's working fine. So that's pretty much how you can do the snapshot rendering. And it's uh, pretty much very straightforward. It basically, you can update your snapshot or you fix your GS DOM or tree. And I'll put this video under uh, Gaur Associates React GS testing. And thank you for watching this short screencast. And you